This is episode number 181. What happens when you release something, a book, a podcast, a blog post? It was good at the time, it's not so good now. That's what I'm talking about on this episode. This is the Red Podcast. How to take your idea and make a name for yourself within your industry and beyond. Spread your message. Attract a following. Rise above the noise. Here's your host, David Hooper. Yet another Halloween season has come and gone. When I was a kid growing up, late 70s, we used to go trick-or-treating, early 80s. Then a couple things happened. One, somebody started lacing Tylenol. I think it was with cyanide. Took a Tylenol pill for your headache. Bam, dropped dead. Tampering with Tylenol and also the Atlanta child murders. You may be old enough to remember this. If not, look it up. People started getting freaked out that somebody might want to hurt their children. So between fear of somebody messing with something that you would ingest and fear of somebody messing with your children, trick-or-treating was canceled for several years, but it's back, finally. It's taken 20, 30 years, but it is back. And something that I've noticed that I don't remember when I was a kid, I mean, we kind of had this, is that people are changing the contract that you have for Halloween. And the contract is a kid comes up to your door, knocks on it, you open it, he says trick or treat, you give him some candy. Now, when I was a kid, the worst thing that could happen is somebody throws a toothbrush in there. Yeah, that's real funny, man. The contract calls for candy. But what I'm noticing now, and maybe this is because I'm in the buckle of the Bible belt, is that instead of candy, you got people handing out religious tracts like cartoon Bible verses or cartoon Koran verses or cartoon whatever your religion is, trying to get these kids to convert to it. That's not the contract. You're changing the deal of Halloween. And the deal is a kid dresses up. He comes up to your door. He knocks on the door. You open it. He says trick or treat. You give him candy. You wish him happy Halloween. Send him on his way. Done. You don't like it, don't participate. In business, we have similar contracts. An audience expects something, you provide it. When you don't provide what is expected, they get agitated. That's the kind of thing that I talk about here. This is the Red Podcast, the podcast for influencers. If you're a blogger, podcaster, speaker, you're a marketer, nonfiction author, and entrepreneur, this is the podcast for you. The things I talk about, Things like book publishing, podcasting, speaking, and other marketing elements of your business that you must master to make a name for yourself. The focus is how to do just that. It's how to take your idea, make a name for yourself, and make money. Part of that is you living up to the contracts and expectations of your audience. A few years ago, I was working on a movie. I was the music supervisor for this movie. And music supervisor, basically what you do is you've got this movie, you've got dialogue, you've got scenes. And you're the guy that comes up with the music to place behind those scenes or in front of those scenes. For example, these 80s montages where Rocky's training, they got music behind them. That's the music supervisor's job to pick that music. And that's what I was doing on this film. Had a great opening scene, high energy. The title credits are rolling. This is where you want to be within a movie. You're basically the theme song for the movie. Selected the band, selected the song. Everything was recorded. The band is into it. The writers are into it. All the contracts are signed. The producer for the film, she loves it. Just a few days away from the release. And I get a call. And what had happened was the band, it's an independent group, they gotten signed to a production deal and a new producer had come in and he wants to take the song, the one that these guys had recorded and the one that was going to be used in the film and he wants to record it again. Big name producer. The band is very excited about it, but they're also excited about the film. They realize that it's going to be a great opportunity for them to get their music out there. The problem is they're re-recording the same song later, and the producer is concerned that a lot of people are going to hear the old version of the song. In other words, not his version. And because of that, they're going to get used to hearing a song one way, and the release is going to be done in a different way. We were just a few days away from the movie's release. It really put everybody in a crunch. So what we did is we removed the track, 
and replaced it with somebody else. And that's what I'm talking about on this episode. What happens when you've got something that's already released and you want a fresh start? You go back, you pull everything that you've done in the past and try to replace it with something else. Or do you put something new on top of it? Or do you just keep going, leaving the old material for people to find if they find it? Now, if you've been in this business for a while, you're a blogger, podcaster, author, you've got stuff like old books, old blogs, old articles that you've written, and it's not as good as what you're doing now, or it's not what you're doing now. If you go to Amazon.com and you look at my name, David Hooper, there's a book that I wrote about 15 years ago, and the review goes something like this. A disappointment like David Hooper himself. This book is very disappointing, just like David Hooper's seminar. He just tries to copy other music industry experts and provides you with a book that is nothing more than a doorstop. I couldn't even sell my copy at a used store, and Amazon didn't want it, saying that these don't sell. It's junk. <laughs> You know, it's funny to look at that review, and I do often. I've probably read it here on the podcast. I've used it when speaking to people. I think it's an example of something extremely personal that a lot of people, if they saw it, would be upset by. And a lot of people, if they saw it, would do what they can to remove it, to hide it. And here I am reading it for you, using it when I give live talks for this exact reason. A lot of people want a fresh start. We've got something that may or may not be the best book, and this book was not the best book. It later was removed, not because I was ashamed of it, but because it was bad information. It just got outdated. That's what happens when you're talking about a changing industry. Some of the stuff that you put out, because the industry is changing, technology is changing, everything is changing, the way people consume information is changing, some of the information is just not going to be relevant. And that's why I removed that. However, if you've ever released something on Amazon, Amazon does not remove anything. This guy was wrong. He says Amazon didn't want it saying that they don't sell. Well, you can get used copies on Amazon called How I Make $100,000 in the Music Business. You can go get a copy right now if you want to. But don't because, like I said, it's an older book. Things have changed. Got a much newer one if you're interested. Six-figure musician. Look that one up. The tendency, because things do get outdated, because we do improve as influencers, the tendency is to want to go in and remove all the old stuff, remove all the material that we just can't connect with. A couple of weeks ago, I happened to run into an old friend from high school. Hadn't seen the dude in 25 years. We had a good chat. But it's kind of funny to think about is that the guy that you're talking to is completely different than he was 25 years ago. You're completely different than you were 25 years ago. It's like two different people. But the person that you were 25 years ago, the person that he was 25 years ago, is what's enabling you to have that conversation. And this is true with your content as well. This is the reason that I say a fresh start. In other words, going in, removing every single thing that you've released in the past is not a good idea. Here's why. One, it shows that you have a positive trajectory. You should be improving. If you're releasing stuff now, it shouldn't be the same type of information that you were releasing earlier. If you release something today, it shouldn't be the same thing that you released a year ago. It shouldn't be the same thing that you released five years ago. If you were to go see a movie by your favorite producer, your favorite actors are starring in it, and you saw basically a copy of something that had been done five, ten years ago, you'd be very disappointed. It should be different. It should be better. Same thing with music. We don't want to hear the same album by the same band done over and over and over again. There should be that forward trajectory, and that is why you need to have this old content there, to show that you're moving forward. It's good for you because it shows you that you're moving forward. This is a slow process. If you're writing books, writing blogs, recording podcasts, it takes a long time for you to get good at these things. If you listen to this podcast, for instance, 181, if you go back and listen to episode number 180, at redpodcast.com slash 180, you're not going to hear much difference in the way that I speak, the way that I deliver information, the quality of the content. But if you go way back to when this began, about a year and a half ago, episode number one, episode number two, when Laurel was my co-host, huge difference. 
And that's very important for you to see, but also the people that are listening to you. You need to know that you're improving and getting better, but they also need to know that because they're on the journey with you. You're holding their hand. You're taking them from point A to point B, helping them with business, helping them with health, finance, whatever it is that you're helping your audience with. And they want to know that you're moving forward. So having this old information that maybe isn't as polished as your new information, your current information, that's very important. Number two, why I think you shouldn't worry about this is because nobody really cares. People want your latest stuff. If you're new to Red Podcast, you've come on in the last couple of months, the chance that you have gone back into the catalog and listened to those old episodes in the teens, the 20s, the 30s, there are a lot of them. 180 episodes before this one. The chance that you've gone way back into the catalog is very slim. People want your latest stuff. They want to know what you're doing now. That's the main reason that you always want to be creating, putting out new product, because people aren't going to go digging for your old product. There's a lot of product out there to choose from, and it's important that you, if you want to be considered relevant, continue to put out product of your own. On that note, it's my feeling that people value longevity more than they value perfection. They would rather see you started something, continue to work on it, and are continuing to work on it rather than try to go for perfection where you just did something once and we're afraid to do something again. Give you a music business example, Guns N' Roses. Big albums back in the 80s, back in the 90s, disappeared. Axl Rose spent years in the studio. He was trying to get albums out, but he let perfectionism get the best of him. Brought in new bands, new producers, millions and millions of dollars spent on this album. Finally, Chinese Democracy was released, and by that time, nobody cared. People would have forgiven a bad album. In the same amount of time, 10 or 15 years, with the money that he spent on studio time, the energy, the effort, the people, he could have put out several albums. And people would have forgiven a bad one. They don't expect perfection. They want longevity. They want consistency. And like I mentioned earlier about getting better, that's what people expect from you too. They expect you to be better than you were previously. Now, this doesn't always work for musicians or creative people where you've got your finger on the pulse of culture at that moment in time. And you've got a great album, a great book, a great movie that really connects with people. But in our business, the influencer business, nonfiction authors, speakers, podcasters, it does work. People expect that you're going to be better today than you were yesterday. And because of the work that you're doing, always learning, listening to things like this podcast, you are going to be better. Reason number three, the understanding that nothing is perfect. That's how you end up in the studio for 15 years. That's how you end up not doing anything because you get caught up in perfectionism. I don't think you need to put out crap. I don't think you need to write a book, not let anybody see it, not let anybody edit it, just throw it up on Kindle and put it out there. No, I think you need to make it the best that you can. But you do need to release the best that you've got at the time, knowing that it's not going to be perfect because it's never perfect. No release equals no results. And sometimes that imperfect release is what gets you your second shot. Another band I was working with put out an imperfect release, independent, Geffen Records heard it, they got a record deal, Geffen Records re-recorded it. And that's probably what was happening with the band that I mentioned at the very beginning of this episode that got the deal in the movie that I was doing music supervision for. But remember, if nobody hears it, it might as well not exist. And what happened to that band? Nothing. Nobody's heard that second version because it hasn't been released yet. So they've got a first version, which is the one that I wanted to use, but it's too late. The movie's out. We found somebody else. And will that opportunity come up for them again? Will they ever get another shot like that? Maybe, maybe not. But you've got to release the best that you've got when you've got it. And that time is now. Now is always the time. Not next week. Not a year from now. It's right now. Next episode, number 182, which will be at Red Podcast number 182, going to take you back to the basics. I've got four success barriers, four things that are holding you back. They are not what you think. That's coming up next on Red Podcast. About this episode, any of the things that I've said or anything business-related, marketing-related, building and influence-related, 
reach out to me. If you've got questions or comments, at David Hooper on Twitter is the best way to get in touch. If you want to send me an email, redpodcast.com will let you do that. Speaking of redpodcast.com, if you want to make sure that you never miss an episode, redpodcast.com is the place to go. If you've got an iPhone, you listen on iTunes, one click will get you set up. You're on Android, one click gets you set up. You want to listen from the web. There you go. Listen to all those old episodes that aren't as polished, but we still release them anyway. It's easy to do at redpodcast.com. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for helping me to build the Red Podcast community. I'll see you next time on the next episode of the Red Podcast. You've been listening to Red Podcast, real entrepreneur development. Subscribe today using iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS at redpodcast.com. 